All right, Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rechakwadash, and double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutation to the elect, the house of David. All right, um, I was watching uh, this video done by the apostle Tahar. I finished it. Um, real good video. Uh, this is a topic that pops up from time to time uh, because. You know, when dealing with this topic, as you can see the, the title of his video, Back to the Basics, which, as he said in the video, is really not basic. The basics of the scriptures are deep within himself, you know, but they're only for spiritual men to teach because you have a lot of people who run across that word giant and they formulate all sorts of idol worship and heathenistic ideologies into the scriptures dealing with angels jumping down from heaven and having sex with women and that's not what the scriptures is talking about but the name of this video is uh back to the basics giants the nephilims and the sons of god and you can type in nephilims and giants on youtube right now and what you're going to see is a bunch of bugged out breakdowns now you'll see great millstone breakdowns and you may have other a few other israelite groups who have the understanding on that who have done breakdowns on it uh, but I'm gonna do a quick one because it's actually a, a very very important topic for you to understand all right when reading the Bible okay it's a lot of people who come into this truth and these basics these uh, these things like this all right they don't have a full understanding of but they'll try to jump to the book of Revelation or try to understand the Gentiles or try to understand but they don't even have a basic foundation within the book of Genesis within the story of Adam and Eve within the story of the sons of God within this story with the Giants all right understanding and having a foundation here in these things even the Allah Hayyim, in the beginning the Allah Hayyim created the heaven and the earth it's a lot of people that don't have a foundation or a, a, a understanding in that and they go off and try to teach everything else or learn everything else and it becomes a stumbling block man but a lot of people which we're going to get in the book of genesis they see this word giants and they lose it man gocc i know is one uh school who teaches that the nephilims are giants such as zeus all right and uh other you know uh uh false idols who came out of the skies and had sex all right with women which produced the wicked on the earth or some shit like that man which that's far from the truth we're gonna go ahead and get into it you can watch this video i'm just gonna do a land back off of what the apostle already did he, he broke it down in this video but the spirit was on me to uh just do a reply video to it so uh lord willing you brothers and few sisters who are watching are edified all right we're going to go ahead and get the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter, okay? Because if you remember, Genesis, the fourth chapter, dealt with uh, Cain and Abel, which were the sons of Adam, okay? Now, when you were reading the book of Genesis, all right, after Cain slew Abel, all right, after Cain slew Abel, Okay. Adam had another child and that child's name was Seth okay now when you're dealing with Cain and Abel you have to understand that it was establishing a righteous through Cain I mean uh, not, not through Cain a righteous all right through Abel but he was slew and then a wicked through Cain okay this was the wicked and the righteous seed line being put on a planet earth through adam just as when you read genesis the 25th chapter who did isaac give us he gave us jacob and esau the same thing is happening here okay adam all right through his loins came the righteous and the wicked okay seed line and on down we'll get the story of the sons of god so we'll, we'll start here in genesis the fourth chapter all right, it says, and Adam knew his wife again. This is after, all right, Abel was slew. So Adam knew his wife again, and she bare him a son and called his name Seth. For God said, 
for God said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom came slew all right and to Seth to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos then men began to call upon the name of the Lord so the name of the Lord will be called upon through this seed line okay this is the narrative you have to follow and understand through the Bible so we go to Genesis the fifth chapter okay we go to Genesis the fifth chapter and it states this this is the book of the generations of Adam in the day that God created man in the likeness of God made he him okay male and female created he them all right Adam all right was a was a generation man was a seed line of people man okay the Adamites but the chosen line came through Adam through Seth okay and this is how we have this platform today this is what the Bible is dealing with okay the name of the Lord was given through that line the righteous ways the law statutes commandments the way to be upright on the planet earth was given to this line okay but the issue was that this line always rebelled which led to death all right which will show you male and female created them and blessed them okay and called their name Adam in the day they were created okay and Adam lived in 130 years and begat a son in his own image in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth okay and in the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begot sons and daughters okay so when you keep going down it goes through Seth it goes through Enos okay and you're gonna notice a familiar name pop up okay these are the sons of God on the right hand side okay these are the ones who would uplift and uphold the name and way of the most high all right which was why he said he made them in his likeness okay go down it's methuselah all right and you can read this on your own but i'm not going to read through it all i'm just going to breeze through it so that you can get an understanding and when you get to the end all right what does it say and noah was 500 uh well it starts here at 30 well we'll start here at uh 28 and lamech lived in 108 and two years and begot a son now you'll see lamech there was also a lamech through the seed line of cain okay a lot of these names are going to be familiar when you read these uh these uh, gene lines okay but this is the lamech on the right hand side okay it says because Cain is also was also a son of God. Esau is also a son of God. Okay, but it's on the left hand side for a particular, a different purpose, man. Okay. So verse twenty nine is where you're gonna have to start paying attention. You pay attention to it all, but you're gonna see a name pop up that you're familiar with. It says, and he, and Lamech lived an hundred and eight and two years and begot a son, and called his name Noah, saying. This same shall comfort us concerning our work and, and toil of our hands because the ground which the Lord have cursed. Okay? And that's what the name Noah means, comfort. Okay? And Lamech lived after he begot Noah 590 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years and he died, 777. All right? So it goes into Noah now. When you jump to Genesis, the sixth chapter is where it starts to talk about the sons of God. OK. Now, mind you, the righteous seed line is established through Seth, Enos and all of those. All right. That's what this chapter is dealing with. OK. These are the sons of God on the right hand side. OK. These were the ones who were to uphold the righteousness of Yahweh in the planet Earth. OK. Now, when you jump to Genesis, the sixth chapter, okay, it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, all right, because you also had other nations on the earth, okay, that the sons of God saw 
the daughters of men that they were fair, okay, and took them wives which they chose. Now, people go crazy here and say, well, the sons of God is speaking of the angels. No, the sons of God is speaking of the righteous seed line, okay? And they saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Let's look up this word fair, okay? Okay, fair to wab, good. Okay, pleasant, agreeable. They look good, okay? So what what does this remind you of in the scriptures that you've seen before? Because what does the scripture say? Let's get uh, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, all right? The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Okay, so what can you think of in the Holy Scriptures, all right? What can you think of in the Holy Scriptures, okay, that, that fits with this narrative right here, okay? Israel, man, okay? When they got around the other nations, what did Israel always do? They married unto their wives, the, 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 the daughters of the, the heathen, and what comes with marriages? Customs, feast, idol worship. Okay, and they lost their way. Now, there's a way to deal with a concubine. King David dealt righteously with concubines. He didn't bow to their gods. Okay, this is the same thing. This is no different than what happened at the time of Ezra, Nehemiah, when uh, uh, Jake was raising their children, all right, in the customs of the heathen, through marriages of the, uh, the, the heathen women. Okay, Solomon, he did, he, he fell off through uh, uh uh hold on let me we can do something real quick uh hold up make that a little brighter all right solomon also fell off so this is the same thing happening all right but before we were called israelites that's what you have to understand so let's read this again and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, the chosen line, which Noah was one of those of the chosen line, okay, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives, all right, of all which they chose, okay? And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his day shall be in 120 years, because they went off. Watch this. There were giants in the earth in those days. All right? And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of the men, of men they bare them children, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, because... The, they, they laid with the women of the other nations and they had children. Those children were also sons of God on the right hand side. They would also be labeled Israelites because you have this narrative that if an Israelite man lays with a heathen woman and that child could not be an Israelite. You men need to grow up, man. Men need to get out of your own emotions, man. The seed that comes out of the man, if it comes out of an Israelite man, no matter where it's planted, what comes out of the earth or what comes out of that woman who is in, likened unto the earth is going to be an Israelite, okay? So these men who were supposed to uphold the ways and righteousness of the Most High, who were made in the image of the Most High, did what? Went off, just as Adam went off. You see that? That's what this is talking about. Now let's deal with this word giants real quick, and we'll go back to the story. Okay? Let's go to this word giants. All right? Let's see. Here's the word for giants, okay? Napayal, all right? And that's where you get the Nephilim from, okay? It says giants, the Nephilim, okay? Let's go to the root word. To fall, lie, be cast down, to fall, to fall. 
to fall prostrate, to fall down, okay, to fall short, to fail. And that's what they did. It wasn't that they were literal giants walking around the planet Earth. Now, this was before the flood, so their mass had to be bigger. They had to be bigger and their, their, their stature would have to be bigger than what we see today. Okay, as it says in Ezra's, all right, our, our man has, has waxing weak, man. We, we aren't of the same stature of these men. So, of course, the atmosphere of the earth was totally different. They would have to have been bigger. Okay, the earth wasn't as spread out as it is with all of the water now. So, most likely, it spin faster. So, yes, they were bigger, but when it says giants, it's not actually talking about giants. Okay? You see that? To cause to fall, to throw down, to, to lay, to prostrate, to overthrow. Okay? And that's what happened to our people. Now, let's get a precept to where you can find this word. Should be in Genesis. Let's see here. We'll go. No, it should, should be in Psalms. Psalms 82, I believe. Go back. Salakia. We're gonna get I'll just go to it. I believe it's in Psalms 82. Salakia. Uh Sons of God. Uh, let me see here. I don't use this app that much, so let's see. Psalms 82, I believe. There you go. This is Psalms 82 and 6. All right. I have said ye are the sons of God. All right. I have said ye are gods and all of you the children of the most high. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. OK. And he's talking to the chosen line. All right. The the true judges of the planet Earth, man. OK. So it says I have said ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Okay, because it wasn't meant for that chosen line to go off. They were supposed to just know righteousness. But once they learned wickedness, they kept tasting of it. And what did it lead to? A fall, a downfall, man. So let's look up this word, fall like men. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. What you're going to see? The same word, to fall, to lie down, all right? That's that word, Nepal, man. That's where you get the Nephilim, the fallen ones. And who are the fallen ones? The chosen line, okay? Which today, the Israelites, we're the fallen ones because we received the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? The, the Most High made us in His likeness, in His image, okay? Gave us the righteous ways, but what did we do? We chose after the ways of the other nations, the heathen nations, man. Okay? Which is a narrative of the whole Bible. Let's get uh, Psalms 106. Psalms 106. And 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works and served their idols which were a snare unto them, yea, they sacrificed their sons and daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and daughters, all right, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood, thus they were defiled with their own works, and went whoring with their own inventions. Okay? Not only did this happen to Israelites, but before we were called Israelites, it happened to the sons of God. Okay, now when you go back to Genesis 6, okay, we're going to get more. Okay, and that also happened at the time, let's get real quick, the Jews' language. This is Nehemiah 13, all right. 
and I started at 23. In those days, also I saw, saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod and of Ammon and of Moab, and their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the language of the Jews, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons for yourselves. Did not King Solomon of did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations there was no king like unto them who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you? to do this great all this great evil to transgress against his own our own god in marrying strange wives now the other women the women of the other nations are only supposed to be concubines but our people were making agreements with their people taking them to their gods okay uh, uh, uh and when you deal with marriage it's more than just sex and that makes the marriage there's agreements there's lands there's a lot that goes with marriage in which you become a part of that family and that family becomes a part of you. Okay? So what our people did was started to marry. All right? As a matter of fact, let's see here. When you look up this word, let's see. Marrying, real quick, Yashab, okay, it says to dwell, to remain, to abide, meaning you were living, the, your, your concubine wasn't supposed to be in your in the same house, you know, like all, all like that, man. She was just your toy, your thing to, to have fun with, man. But these niggas were actually marrying them, man, okay, to dwell, to have one's abode, to stay with, okay, so she brings her gods into your house. And because it's so good, you don't care, man. Then your, your your children are being raised within her customs at the end, at the end, man. This ain't the way that you're supposed to deal with a heathen woman. You're only supposed to marry and dwell and remain with women of your own nation, man. But in these times, it's all messed up, man. Now, when you go back to Genesis, the sixth chapter, okay? Read all of this again with the understanding of what that means and then we'll get some more precepts man Genesis 6 and 1 and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives okay of all which they chose alright and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man all right. Even when the Lord gave Adam a wife, it was out of his family line. OK, the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days. Now, this is where people bug out. Now, we just gave you the understanding of what it means by giants, the fallen ones. OK, the men of great stature, the men whom Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai would, uh, chose to do their will on the earth, but they weren't doing his will. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare them children. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, because they were of that same line. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was was only evil continually just like with adam they ate of that tree just like with israel they got amongst the heathen started uh drinking blood sacrificing their children being homosexuals being uh, losers the same thing happened back here man this is the narrative of the bible the chosen line the lord's chosen which he likens it to his wife whoring after other gods okay and it repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing. All right. And when you jump to verse eight, who amongst them, amongst the sons of God, because Noah, these were his brothers and cousins and family members were just going the hell off. But what was he doing? He stuck to the script. He did what was right. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't go off into those customs of those heathens. He didn't leave from the way of the Lord. So what did the Lord do? He flooded the earth and started over with Noah, which is why in Genesis 5, okay, in 29, it says, and called his name Noah, saying, this same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil, toil of our hands and because of the ground which the Lord have cursed. Okay? So this is where Noah comes in at because he was also one of the sons of God, but he just didn't go off as the sons of God did, the other ones, man, on the right-hand side. And then that's where he had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the lot of the chosen fell on Shem, okay? And later on down, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let's go back to this thing of the giants because there's precepts in the scriptures that describe this, man. Okay? This is Wisdom of Solomon 14. Well, I'll start at uh, I'll start at the, the, the Baruch. Alright, this is Baruch 26. Baruch 3 and 26. Okay? And then we'll go back. It said there were giants famous from the beginning. The, men, the, the chosen men. Right? They were famous. They were great. They jumped the highest. They, 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 they were experts of war, as it's going to say, just like we are today. But look at what we're doing. Look at what our people are doing, man. And we as the, 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 we're gonna, we as the elect are coming in the spirit of Noah, man. We want the Lord to find grace before he engulfs this place in fire in us, man find grace in us man okay should the lord find faith on the earth he found that faith in noah man this ain't talking about no giants jumping down from the heavens having sex with regular women it says there were giants famous from the beginning that were of so great stature and so experts of war those did not the lord choose neither gave he the way of knowledge unto them okay because what the creature was made subject to vanity. Okay, but they were destroyed because they had no wisdom and perished in their own foolishness. Okay? And that's what happened. Okay, let's go back here. Let's get Sirach 16 and 7. Okay? Sirach 16 and 7. He was not pacified towards the old giants who fell away in the strength of their own, their foolishness. And what was their foolishness? Idol worship. Being wicked, which leads to wickedness, man, which is what you see our people doing today. Neither spared he the place where lots were joined, but abhorred them for their pride. Okay? You see that? He was not pacified toward the old giants, man. The fallen ones. Okay? We are those fallen ones, man. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 6. Now, this chapter, Solomon is going into the history of idol worship and how from the beginning it's been the problem. Okay? The time of Adam and Eve. What do you think eating the, 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 the other trees and eating of those other philosophies were? It was idol worship, man. We were supposed to eat of the tree of life, which leads to life. Okay? The righteousness, the law, statutes, commandments, man, before they were written on tablets, it was given orally to this people, man. So this this chapter is dealing with idol worship. OK, and here you go. Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 6. For in old time also, when the proud giants perished, the hope of the world governed by the hand escaped in a weak vessel left to all ages a seed of generation. For blessed is wood whereby righteousness cometh. There's nothing wrong with wood, right? 
But when you take wood and create an idol and that idol becomes a god, which is the dumb and stupidity that these other nations are into. All right. Because vagina is good. Right. But when you take vagina, put it on a pedestal and put it, make it into a god. OK. When you make men into gods and something you, you know, uh, 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 deem higher than, you know, the creator and, you know, wind, air, all of these things. This is what the heathen were into, and this is what our people got into, man. Idol worship. Go jump to verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of God they are become an abomination and stumbling blocks to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, in the invention of them the corruption of life. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. Okay? Let's get uh, Wisdom of Solomon 12, man. I think this is the chapter where it talks about how they deemed uh, fire and wind and I don't know where it's at. Uh, let's see here. But you get the point. The heathen deemed fire, wind, and all of these things to be uh, 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 gods, you know? Let's see here. Let me try to look for it real quick. That's what our people were getting into. This is what the sons of God were getting into, man. probably won't find it there you go so wisdom of solomon 13 when you deal with wisdom of solomon 12 through 14 you'll get a lot of uh history on the sons of god and what was happening you know uh with the with the seed line of adam and how they went off you know this is wisdom of solomon 13 and 1 surely vain are all men by nature who are ignorant of god and could not out of the things that are seen known him that is, neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster, but deemed either fire or wind or swift air or circles of the stars or violent waters or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. Okay, and that's the knowledge of these heathens, man. That's what they're into. We, as the sons of God, were supposed to always worship the Heavenly Father in sincerity and truth and uplift him in the earth. Okay? Which is why we became Gentiles. This is how we became Gentiles. It all it it don't it didn't just happen at the time of uh of of, of Paul, okay? The, the the Lord divorced us back here too. Okay? But just when we were named Israel. Did you start to see it named in that way? Okay, the marriage, the wife. But when you, if you're spiritual, you can read this. Okay, because it says, "And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man, for that he, he is also flesh." Then it talks about there were giants in the earth in those days. All right, and then when you jump, it said, "The wickedness of man became great on the earth." You have to extrapolate and say, "Well, why? What? What? Why, what made it wicked?" The same thing, our people going amongst the Gentiles and learning their ways, man. It's the same story. That's what this is talking about, man. And there's so much more we can get into, but I don't have that much time. But this is what it's talking about when it's talking about the giants, man. That chosen line that came through Adam, because you had two lines that came through Adam. You had Cain, then you had Abel. Abel was slew. Seth was born, and then men started to call on the name of the Lord, meaning this was the chosen line. This is the line in whom he would put his image. Okay? And as this line grew and got bigger, okay, here came Noah. And then at, at this time, it, they, they, they saw the daughters of men, and they completely left off from the ways that were given unto them to live by. Point blank period. This is not talking about no damn angels hopping out of the earth man okay the angels the chains of darkness are these bodies man 
because we rebelled against the Lord. Okay? Let me get that scripture. I think it's in Peter. Oh, boy. Yeah. I think it's in Peter. There you go. It's the second Peter. All right. Come on, man. Second Peter 2 and 4. For if God spared not the angels that sin, and we are the angels, we're the Allahim. Okay? For if God spared not the angels that sinned, how did they sin? Before the law was was uh, uh, wrote writ on uh, tablets, because they were given the the laws orally. It was supposed to be in them. Okay, but through Adam's sin, we all fell, man. Okay. For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down, the Nephilim. Okay, <laughs> the fallen ones, but cast them down to hell. All right, and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but save Noah. It's talking about that same story that we just read about, brothers. And you few sisters, hopefully y'all getting this, man. Let me know if they're on the comment board if, if I'm making sense, man. Because if I'm not, I'll do another video. Didn't we just read this same narrative? But people see God and angels. Ain't we the angels? Angels just means messengers. Let's go back here real quick to Genesis, man. Oh, boy, the app is crashing now, I guess. Hold up. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. What are these chains of darkness? These bodies, man. This flesh. Being subject unto sin, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly. See that? That's what that's talking about. Somebody said, what, is, what about what Peter said? No, Peter is talking about this same thing that we're reading about in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Okay? That's it, man. <laughs> He's talking about this, man. There was something I wanted to look up real quick. Yep. When the sons of God. But that's it, man. You know, I, I made the point, man. I made the point. I'm not going to try to go too deep. Hey, man, through the spirit, hopefully I'll edify, man. We're going to give all praise. Call halal, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rechach, Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. We also want to give peace and salutation to the elect. Look, man, this ain't talking about the angels, all right, from the, uh, 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 you know, spirit world jumping down. Now, the sons of God were angels. In the beginning, but we came down in flesh eventually, man. Through union of men and women. Those spirits that you read about in the beginning, the Allah I am created to heaven and earth, they eventually came down in flesh through union of man and woman, man. Let me know if the understanding was given. Shalom.